Hi everybody, this is Miss Bufford and this is video 6 in our acids and bases unit and in this video we're going to cover the difference between acid and base strength and concentration. Your learning goals for this video are to be able to explain the difference between acid or base strength and acid or base concentration and to be able to relate acids and bases to the conductivity of solutions. So acid-base concentration um, really is just related to the amount of solute that there is in that solution, the amount of the acid or base that's dissolved in that water. So the greater amount of solute that we have dissolved in that solution, the more concentrated it is. So if you take a look at that first beaker over there, you see all those particles that have been dissolved in that solution, and there are a lot of them, so we say that is a more concentrated solution. And then the smaller the amount of solute dissolved in the solution, the more dilute it is. So if we take a look at that second beaker, that represents a more diluted solution because there are fewer particles for every unit of volume. When we talk about acid and base strength, the strength of the acid or base is more related to the degree to which the acid or base is going to ionize in that solution. So Stronger acids or bases will completely dissociate in aqueous solution, meaning they're, um, they're, they'll come up completely apart to form ions. So if we take a look at this first beaker, you'll notice that um, this substance has completely dissociated into independently floating particles, and uh, these are also um, ions. And then weak acids or bases will not completely dissociate in aqueous solution. So these are going to be weak electrolytes. So weak acids are weak electrolytes. Um, and just like the weak electrolytes, they only partially dissociate. So if you look at the second beaker, we've got you know a few ions in there, but mostly we've got a lot of the particles that are still intact. They're still um, still stuck to each other. Okay. So some examples of strong acids and bases would be listed on this slide. So over here we've got the seven strong acids. So this is a complete list of all of the strong acids there are. Any other acid that's not on this list is going to be considered a weak acid. So it's a good idea just to kind of memorize this list or be really familiar with this list so that you know to recognize a strong acid uh, when you hear the name or see the formula. The eight strong bases, however, are just a list of the most common strong bases. There are other strong bases that exist, but they are really not very common. And so we're just going to be concerned with knowing these eight strong bases. This is something that um, you'll need to be familiar with. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is the relationship between acid and base strength and concentration and their pH values. So um, if you take a look, I've got the pH scale listed across the screen, and then above that there are some beakers. In the middle I've got my neutral beaker uh, right above a pH of 7. To the left of that I have my more acidic solutions, and then to the right I have my more basic solutions. So. Up at the top, let's go ahead and talk about these pH ranges first. So strong acids typically have a natural pH range of about 0 to 3. Weak acids will typically have a pH range from about 5 to just below 7. Weak bases will typically have a pH range from just above 7 to 10. And strong bases typically have a pH range of about 12 to 14. Now, um, these pH ranges are just kind of a rule of thumb. They're not set in stone. Um, it is very possible to take a strong acid and dilute it so that it's got a pH range that is greater than 3, um, somewhere between 3 and 7. And it's also possible to take a weak acid and make it more concentrated so that its pH value is less than 5. So we have more uh, higher hydrogen ion concentration if we can concentrate a weak acid. And the same is true for the basic side of the scale. We can take a strong base and dilute it so that its pH um, will be less than 12. And we can also take a weak base and concentrate it so that it will have a, um, a higher pH value. All right? So 
through diluting and concentrating these different um, acids and bases, we can actually adjust the pHs to be what we need them to be. And so um, let's talk about, though, the relationship between this acidic side and this basic side. So let's say I start with a strong acid and I dilute it and I dilute it and I continue to dilute it while the pH is changing. Eventually though, I'm gonna reach a point at which my pH is not gonna change anymore. And the same thing for a strong base. If I start with a strong base, eventually if I continue to dilute that solution, I'm gonna end up with something that looks like water. All right, so the point at which these um, solutions are no longer you're no, you're no longer going to be able to change the pH is that neutral point in se at 7 right in the middle. And if you remember, we talked before about how water will self-ionize. So it produces its own um, small concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide ions naturally. And um, that is why, you know, when we, can, we continue to dilute this, eventually the concentrations are going to match the natural concentration of what you know, water would normally be producing, and we're not going to be able to change the pH beyond that point. For example, I could never ever dilute a strong acid to have a pH greater than 7. I would have to add a base to, to that solution in order to get the pH to go beyond 7. And on the same, on the other side of that, flip, flip side of that coin, I've got a strong base. If I could never ever dilute a strong base, to have a pH less than seven. Um, I would have to add an acid to get the pH to change to something less than seven if I started with a base, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and ask a couple questions. This first question um, says that acids and bases are electrolytes and they will conduct electricity in aqueous solution. If the number of ions in a solution determines how well it will conduct electricity, will these solutions conduct electricity equally? If not, order them from best to worst conductivity. So take a look at these solutions. I would like for you to pause this video here in a second and just look at the solutions and see if you can figure out which one's gonna be the best conductor of electricity, which one's not gonna conduct electricity very well at all, and you know where, what order do the other two beakers go in. So see if you can go ahead and pause the video, either write that in your notebook or on a piece of scrap paper. All right, so hopefully you pause the video and you came up with what you think is your correct answer, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So our best conductor is going to be the one that contains the most ions in solution. And so that is going to be the concentrated solution of a strong acid or base. Those are going to be our strongest electrolytes. They're going to conduct electricity the best. Then our second beakers are the dilute solution of the strong acid and the concentrated solution of the weak acid or base. So these two, these two beakers actually, if you count the ions that are in here, they actually have an equal number of ions, even though this has more solute in it, not all of that solute has completely ionized. And remember, it's the ions in that solution that are gonna allow it to conduct electricity. And then our last beaker, the one that's not the best at conducting electricity, is gonna be our dilute solution of a weak acid or base because um, it's just really not that great at conducting electricity. It doesn't have very many ions in solution. All right, and our second question, if the number of hydronium ions in a solution determines its pH, is it possible to have a dilute solution of a strong acid or base and a concentrated solution of a weak acid or base at the same pH and why? All right, so go ahead and take a minute, pause the video if you need to, to think about that, and we will answer it in just a second. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to pause that video. Um, let's take a look at the two beakers that the question is asking about. So it's asking about, is it possible to have a diluted solution of a strong acid or base, so this first beaker right here, and a concentrated solution of a weak acid or base, so this 
last beaker over here at the same pH. So what are these beakers at the same pH? And the answer is yes, a diluted strong acid and a concentrated weak acid could potentially have the same pH if their concentrations of ions were the same. Thanks for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.